Namaskar. My second book in the Money series, Who Painted My Lust Red, was released about two years ago. And at that point of time, I had not imagined that history would repeat itself. That's right. Two new IPL teams got added again. You remember the first time Kochi, Tusker Saga, Sweat Equity, 50 crores? Remember that? How Modi made fun of Shashi Tharoor? Anyway, so there is some interesting backdrop here. So I thought, why not I regale you with one chapter from this book? I'm going to read chapter 9 and I hope you find it as much fun to read or listen to as I did when I wrote this thing. Makar pitches for an IPL team. Makar Fantu Shwairwala was getting impatient. 2M would not return his calls, nor would he reply to the frantic emails he had sent. He had promised Deepika Sharma's family that he would get them a backdoor entry into two expansion teams, the idea of which he had floated precisely to accommodate her. Makar had a hunch that Deepika would ease out the PM who was Dylan at the earliest opportunity and install a more pliable person. The competition for that pliable person was terrific with the likes of Maida and Dalda falling head over heels to carry out every whim and fancy of the Queen Bee. Having worked in the United Nations where harmony and dislike, friendship and enmity and tactic and strategy coexisted in an entwined helix form, Makar was confident of getting the better of the other two when it came to gaining Deepika's trust. Besides, she was enamored of people who had foreign accents and spoke in a manner that floored listeners not so much with sense as with the complicated vocabulary used. Adding two new teams was his way of signaling to the Queen Bee that he knew how to take care of her family interests. The existing council of eight teams was cool to the idea, not sure if adding two more to the list would help or harm them. The owners knew that they were merely faces for political heavyweights such as Madhav Mantri or Mamaji and Mailapur Damodaran or Maida and had to do their bidding. Each team had a couple of go-to players who would, for a fee, help their cause. With the media looking at each twist with suspicion and blowing it up in the public domain, novel and more opaque ways of fixing had to be devised. Questions like, was that a good ball or a bad shot? Did the fielder deliberately miss the catch or was it a case of butterfingers? Were being asked by the viewers who had become highly circumspect as a result of the education the television channels were imparting to them. The owners were conscious of the downside of adding more games and of viewer fatigue since already there were far too many games being played with double headers on the weekends. Plus, with cricket being played year-round, there were not enough fit quality players to fill up two more teams. Makar was deep in conversation with a couple of owners in the aftermath party in Dubai when he saw Preeti Ahuja sweep in. He was waiting for Manohar Munim 2M to make an appearance so he could collar him on adding the new teams. Finances had already been lined up. Every bidder had a chunk of the Sharma money, so regardless of who won the bidding, the investment would be Deepika Sharma's. Needless to say, the games involving the two teams would be the ones that would have the most twists and turns real and created. Prime Minister Dillon was aware of these machinations. The Intelligence Bureau had always kept him abreast, but he had a trick or two up his sleeve which he would use when he felt the need. After all, he had not only survived the pulls and pressures of Deepika Sharma, but even surprised her once or twice. Under the garb of fealty, he kept his cards close to his chest and sprung a surprise occasionally. Makar had arrived the previous night and was whisked away from the private strip to a mansion in the Palm Island area, where 
a lot of retired generals from Pakistan lived. The opulent houses came with a beach front and stunning views of the downtown skyline. A tall man with a military bearing received him at the house and after the usual pleasantries assured Makar that his investments in various ventures in Dubai were doing well. They went over the numbers and Makar's smile grew wider as he appeared to have hit the sweet spot with his investments in the Palm Island project. But he had one concern. Dilawar's Hawala guys in Kochi and New Delhi had hiked their commission fees from 15% to 20% and he was wondering if Mr. D could perhaps hold the line at 15% for the upcoming bonanza that would result in his owning stakes in the two new IPL teams. A quick call was all it took for the ISI handler to confirm to Makar that as long as the amounts exceeded rupees 100 crores per game, the commission would be 15%. Makar knew that the total amount gambled in one IPL game ranged between 600 crores to 1000 crores. 10% of the total take should be doable. He nodded his head in satisfaction. But there was more. As the ISI man withdrew discreetly, Makar was shown his bedroom, a mini mansion in itself with an attached bar and breathtaking views of the downtown skyline. He changed into his night clothes, humming a Beatles song. As he settled on his bed, he heard a soft knock on the door and when he opened, lo and behold, he saw the stunning Shabnam Khan, a budding Pakistani actor who wanted to break into Bollywood. She wanted to cultivate the suave Makar. Shabnam had studied in the US, in New York, and was referred to Makar by an erstwhile friend of his from his UN days. After small talk and offer of fine wine, Shabnam was treated to an impressively rendered but hollow soliloquy by Makar. Succeeding in Bollywood takes beauty, brains and a certain X factor. And the camera must love you unconditionally in every type of ambiance. Let me look at you, he said, as he gently moved her head from right to left, trying to act professional. Makar was gauging his prey even as he was trying to give gyan. It is an importunate, pertinacious occupation that demands that one be on one's A game at all times. One can never predict how one's movie will do six to nine months down the road. Viewers are never sated, can be fickle, even exigent. One must develop an ESP, an extrasensory perception, and must be able to converse telepathically, not just with one's co-stars, but also with the audience. It was time to reel her in. Shabnam was following Makar till he hit importunate, but quickly synced up at a game. But to Makar's utter disappointment, she finished her glass of wine, got up, thanked him profusely and left the room. Opportunity lust, <coughs> er, lost, cursed Makar under his breath. Even as he heard her car drive off, Makar's cell phone rang. It was his latest squeeze, Shilpa Kaul, also based in Dubai. And she was hopping mad. How dare you come to Dubai and ignore me? And where are you now? She demanded to know. Clearly, someone had tipped her off after his arrival in Dubai. Since he had not told her of his plans, and for good reason, she was furious. She had suspected that he might be sleeping around just like he did with her. When they met, he was still officially married to his second wife. He had since divorced her and was now gallivanting around the countryside. Since she was not expecting Makar, she was on a brief trip to Canada to take care of some business there and Casanova was playing in her backyard. Makar had to douse the fires and he did so with consummate ease that he had acquired over years of his infidelity. Something urgent came up, dear. He cooled. 
My good friend Deepika wanted me to explore the possibility of looking at a few opportunities and I came here on the pretext of watching an IPL game so that it did not look suspicious, he finished. What he said was true. Every act for Deepika had to be done in stealth mode. Shilpa was not convinced. Both knew that Dubai was the playground of India's politicians and an IPL game was the watering hole of the bald and the beautiful. What happened to the deal you were working with 2M? She probed. Makar had promised that Shilpa would be the face for the equity of his money into one of the two new IPL teams and she wanted to ensure that he did not welch on his promise. Reiterating his commitment, Makar signed off with sweet nothings and decided to hit the sack. Tomorrow was game day and he hoped to get lucky. Dubai was full of fixers who would set anyone up with anything for a fee. Exotic drugs, girls from various countries to perform services ranged from the positions in Kama Sutra to the unimaginable, drinks mixed with drugs to experience alternate universes and so on. 2M was running late. Deliberately, because he did not want to meet Makar as he had some other parties too that were interested in getting in on the IPL action. Their needs trumped Makar's. But he could not tell Makar that. No one said no to a minister considered close to Deepika and lived to tell the story. So he waited till the party was dying down and breezed in. Makar, long time no see. 2M used a Yankee phrase to break the ice. Makar eased 2M to a corner and reminded him of his promise to allow his consortium to bid. 2M was a master at massaging egos. That's how he had risen in his life and in his career. Totally bro, we will ensure that your consortium wins no matter what others bid. He winked. I must catch a flight to London to take care of some business and I will stay in touch. Ta-ta for now. Makar was not satisfied with the meeting. He had done similar stunts himself. But this was a public place and he had to hold his temper. Just as he looked around, he saw Preeti dancing with an upcoming fast bowler. He turned his gaze to his fixer who took the hint and nodded back. The die was cast. Makar wanted a tryst with Preeti. Well, that was chapter 9 of the book. I hope you liked it. And do buy this book. It's an amazing piece of fiction because I see that history is repeating itself. And in fact, it is repeating itself much quicker than I thought. Two new teams. The IPL biddings were at the highest this time around. Why loss-making teams would fetch such high bids, only God can explain or perhaps the owners can explain. Also, if you want to know the real reason, you can read the book and you'll know the answers. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. Namaskar.